The next example we'll look at is traffic engineering and CDNs, the content distribution networks. Now each CDN has its own configuration recommendations, so these slides are only a guideline. It is best to consult directly with the CDN in question about the operational and traffic engineering policies. Several CDNs do not wish for their peers, their network operators, to attempt to do traffic engineering because they have fairly sophisticated tools operating within the CDN itself to ensure that traffic flow is optimum for end user enjoyment. The various CDN implementations deployed. One example might be the CDN is present at the exchange point via the exchange point services infrastructure. Transit or backhaul cash flow is via one of the IX members or a transit provider or via the CDN's own infrastructure. Other CDNs will peer directly at the exchange point. They will take a port on the Ethernet switch and openly peer with the members of the IX. Other CDNs will not be at the IX, but will be hosted by the IX member, who then makes their address space and therefore their content available to other members of the Internet Exchange Point. The diagram shows an example where the CDN is present as part of the Exchange Point Services LAN. The Exchange Point Services is gatewayed onto the Exchange Point through Router A, and the CDN provides their infrastructure, servers, and probably their own router to connect it into the IXP Services LAN. The CDN has its own transit connection for cash flow. The BGP configuration here would be that the IXP members peer with the IXP services router, the router A in the diagram. They will receive the routes originated by the CDN. The IXP services will announce the routes to be served to the CDN. And of course, the CDN has its own transit arrangements, either via the exchange point member or separate infrastructure. CDNs usually serve content to operators based on a combination of lowest round trip time or latency, because end users expect instant access to all content. They also pay attention to BGP announcements of the peer. Following most specific announcements in some cases, sometimes they'll look at AS path length and quite often the BGP MED. But operators need to talk to CDN operator about the CDN's actual BGP policy. Operators also need to watch the bandwidth to the CDN and pay close attention to the BGP announcements that they're making globally as well across the exchange point. The next example is where the CDN is a member of the Internet Exchange Point. The CDN router will connect directly to the IX and will peer with all members of the exchange. The CDN will have its own separate transit connection for the cash flow. So the BGP configuration is just like any other exchange point member. The CDN will peer with all the IXP members. The IXP members will receive the routes originated by the CDN. And the CDN has its own transit arrangements via the IXP member or the separate infrastructure. And the operations are the same as for the previous example. The third example is where the CDN is hosted by a member. This is more common in the cases of the smaller exchange points or where the members cannot work out how to host the CDN at the exchange. Quite often it might be the major telecom operator or the major transit provider that has enough traffic to justify the CDN, so it hosts it within their own network. So the CDN connects into the network core of the IXP member, and the IXP member's transit connection is used for the cash flow. IXP members will peer with AS100, which is the peering router A, shown in the diagram. IXP members receive the routes originated by the CDN, as well as those originated by AS100. AS100 announces routes to be served to the CDN, and this could depend on AS100's agreement with each of its peering partners. AS100 might well charge for access to the CDN content because they have to pay 
for the backhaul. And yes, 100 may even limit access to the CDN content to certain peering partners as well. So in addition to the previous advice, paying attention to the AS path length is quite important. CDNs may well pay attention to BGP attributes. So make sure the shortest path to the CDN is via the IXP member rather than your own transit links. And this is similar to the case when the IXP hosts the CDN directly. And stay in close touch with the member who's giving you access to the CDN or the CDN content cache, especially for any change in policy, especially for any bandwidth or latency issues. If there are bandwidth issues or latency issues, it could well happen that the CDN would prefer to feed traffic to your network directly over your transit link rather than from the local instance of their CDN or their cache. Finally, if you're connecting to a CDN in two different locations, and this can happen with many operators, where they see the CDN through the local internet exchange point or via the local exchange point member, and they see the same CDN through the transit provider or even a regional IXP they might participate in. How do they ensure that the end users access the local CDN and not the one hosted via the transit provider? CDNs normally pay attention to BGP announcements, but there's an open question about whether they will accept traffic engineering or not. Some do, some do not. CDNs normally pay attention to round trip times. They often pay attention to the end user quality, being able to measure how the end user is accessing their data. The solution is always to talk to the CDN and discuss the situation. They want the best for their eyeballs, their end users, like the operator wants the best for their end users.